Hudson Soft used to be a video game powerhouse, and most people have never even played four of their best games. Well, I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I review Hudson Soft's Volume 1 through 4, their GameCube and PS2 imports. Second Opinion Games when playing import games for the GameCube, all he needs is an action replay. When doing it for the PlayStation 2, well, you have to buy yourself a Japanese PlayStation 2. So, all of the gameplay you see here is done from my GameCube, because I have all four of these games for this system. And to start things off, we have Cubic Load Runner. Now, the Load Runner series goes back nearly to the dawn of video games itself. And, guess what? You get it in 3D. Now at its heart, it's just a puzzle game. You're trying to steal some gold, and there's evil robots trying to kill you and take the gold for themselves. So, guess what? There's no jumping in this game whatsoever. Instead, there are ladders to have you get from platform to platform. Also, there's little monkey bars around, or pipes, that you can move around the map as well. Now, because of its 3D perspective, things can get a little complicated. Luckily, the left and right buttons shift the camera angles around your character. And also, luckily, your character moves a bit faster than the robots. The weapon at your disposal is the ability to dig holes, which automatically fill in over time. So if the robots are in the hole, when it fills in, it's destroyed. But they come right back, so don't think it's going to be as easy as killing all the robots and just running around in empty space. If a robot happened to steal some gold, well, when you put them into the ditch, they drop it immediately, trying to get back out, and you could always run over their heads while they're in the ditch. So there's that easy escape plan as well. The buttons on your controller determine where the hole is dug compared to where your person is standing. For example, the A button would be south of your person, and the Y button would be north. And then also, when you're on monkey bars or the pipes, you can press the Z button to drop down. Now, you can't just walk over the gold. Sometimes you actually have to fall from above it in order to pick it up. So it's a little quirk in the game, but it's nothing you won't get over relatively quick. And you might think this looks really easy, but you know what? It's actually one of the most difficult games for the GameCube because these robots are relentless in their tracking of you and also because some of the puzzles are rather difficult. And it's also really easy to kill yourself just like in any Bomberman game. So what's up with Hudson making you your own worst enemy? They seem to do it a lot. There's quite a bit of unlockables as well. The original sound effects for the classic game can be layered over top of the new one, or you could unlock the regular Famicom version of the game. There's also a make your own map mode, which is really intense and can give you lots of ideas of different maps to make for friends to come over and play. But let's face it, they never will. Overall, this is a pretty decent game, but is one that is really hard to find now. Next up, we have Star Soldier. This is my pick for the best shoot 'em up on the GameCube. The action is fast. You can control how fast your ship goes by pressing the right trigger button. Also, the A button fires continuously so you won't wear out your hand or feel like you need turbo buttons. The B button has a really special shot that has to recharge. It can take away enemy bullets and also destroy different things to unleash power-ups. Your ship can be powered up up to like five times, and then every time you pick up a power-up after that, it works as a screen-clearing bomb and doesn't get hit too easily. The learning curve here is just about right, and it is extremely fun to play. The bosses are really cool as well, even if some of them are just generic space crabs. You could also unlock a different boss rush mode, and there are plenty of cheat codes to overpower your character to just run through the game in no time. Have a few minutes to play? Well, then check out Caravan Mode. You can play for either two or five minutes, 
and this is all about the score. Chaining attacks and picking up power-ups is necessary in order to be the top dog. You will be given a huge code, which then you can go online and compare your scores to other people. I don't know if this service is still in use, but you know what? It's in here, and it's really cool that it is. Even trying to get my own top score again and again seems to be something that I really like doing. Like I said, this is probably the best shooter for the GameCube, so it's certainly one you have to get. Moving on to Volume 3, we have PC Genjin, also known as Prometheus Kid, also known as Bonk, because Bonk is just the best. It's an action platformer where you really have to use your head as your weapon to crush your enemies. In case you haven't noticed, it takes place in prehistoric times, and the art design is really unique, kind of like a cardboard cutout Yoshi story thing. But you know what? It was done really well. It starts off pretty easy. A hundred smiley faces earns you an extra life. Also, picking up all the fruit on a level earns you an extra life. And picking up an extra life earns you an extra life. So by the time you reach the end of level two, well, you're going to have like 13 or 14 lives. But don't worry, they're not going to stick around too long because the level two boss is frustratingly difficult. Now, when you die, you pick up from exactly where you left off. So it's like the lives are actually more like health. But like I said, this level two boss is super frustrating. Now this is a retelling of Bonk 1. So I thought when I got to this guy again at the end of the game when they make you refight all the bosses that I was just going to cry and give up. Luckily, you don't do that in this version of the game. And I am super happy about that. Now, this first boss is relatively easy. The second one kills all those lives down, but then the learning curve seems to be done. It's relatively easy from here on out. So as long as you can get past that second boss and stock up on those lives, you'll have no trouble beating this game. Each level seems to be over relatively quick, and I do like how you're ingested by a dinosaur and come out the other side before the first boss. And after fighting the four major bosses of the game, then you have to climb Evil King Drool Epic Tower. And holy crap, this is the longest portion of the entire game. His tower alone is basically the size of the whole rest of the game. And then once you reach the top, you blast off in a rocket ship going straight to the moon. Now, unfortunately, I got the bad ending in this game because of the replayability factor. Yeah, there's these stone wheels hidden throughout the game, and I mean hidden, they're really hard to find. Only ever managed to find about five of these, and I've looked pretty much everywhere. If you find all ten, will you unlock just a commercial that you could easily find on YouTube? So is it worth it? Well, heck yeah, because Bonk is just the best. Also, when you beat the game, you could go and replay any of the levels all over again looking for these stone wheels, so you just cannot pass up on this one. It is one of the best platformers for the system. Volume 4 is a retelling of Adventure Island. I'm sorry I don't know the Japanese name for this game, but it is what it is. The menus aren't too hard to figure it out. You could turn on the rumble feature or turn it to stereo, which I don't know why it wouldn't just be on stereo to begin with. Also, you could set it to little girl mode, which is also the easy version of the game. However, if you set it to easy, it won't track certain statistics or save very well. So that's a trade-off that you're going to have to take. But you know what? It's really not that much easy, so you might as well play with Master Higgins on normal mode. And Master Higgins seems to have an eating disorder. His stamina seems to go down really quick, and when it ends, you're dead. 
so you have to eat tons of fruit. And boy, I would not like to see his toilet because of how much fruit he goes through. Now you're not weaponless here. You will pick up an ax pretty darn quick. There's also spears, boomerangs, and occasionally you could even pick up fireballs if you're exceptionally lucky and know where to look for them. Also, there could be keys hidden around that take you to exotic places, which make you eat more fruit and, and even jump you farther into the game. Each level is broken up into four parts, and when you die, you make it to one of the checkpoints that you were last at. However, if you have to continue, well, you have to play the whole stage all over again. And trust me, you're gonna die a lot. Now, when you watch me playing this game, you might think that I'm extremely good at how I can almost effortlessly run through this game. And you know what? I am really good at it. Yet still, this game frustrates me. Now the bosses here are actually really easy, and I don't think I've ever actually died on a single boss. It doesn't mean that they're really a pushover, it's just that maybe I'm that good at the game. Or maybe that the game itself is so hard in its normal setting that when I finally get to a boss, I just cream through it. The controls here are spot on, and thank God they are. Because if they were off by even a couple hundredths of a second, well then this game would be nearly impossible. That's how difficult it is. I think this is probably the best platform game on the console, or at least the best 2D platform game on the console. If you eat more than 90% of the fruit on any given level, well, you get a bonus stamp showing you the Hudson B. This is basically the goal on every single level, and I recommend that you strive for this because this game's expensive. Matter of fact, all of these games are expensive. This one is maybe around 60 or so dollars. I've seen Bonk sell for over 100, Star Soldier also 100, and I can't even find Cubic Load Runner on eBay. But if you see any of these out in the wild for your GameCube, well, certainly don't hesitate to pick them up. The Hudson Soft Collection, every single game here, is really good and definitely worth replaying. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. I had a great time making it. I love playing import games on my GameCube, and I love finding games that people just don't know that much about, and maybe even explaining them to you. Which is why I've managed to track down some import games that not a single person has done a review of on the entire internet. So I can't wait to share those with you. And if you have games that you want me to play or do reviews of, please leave comments down below. I'm actually writing down everyone's comments and making huge lists of games that I want to cover in the future, making sure that I could do this for quite some time. So until later, I will see you again, guys.